want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. He is a member of the European Union Parliament, hailing from England. He's back in England now. And, uh, of course, he was the former United Kingdom Independence Party head. He stepped down for that to run for another office. And uh, we are joined by him. He's all over the U.S., British, and European news, skewering Herman von Rumpy, the guy that openly calls for world government, a $45 trillion to begin with, wealth transfer from Europe, England, the U.S., and Canada, Australia to the U.N., Gordon Brown last week called for a global government through a banking constitution where the banks take full control of the nations and the taxes are paid directly to them. He joins us for the next 30 minutes. Nigel Farage, rampage of rudeness is the Guardian headline. Nigel Farage faces reprimand for calling Herman Von Rumpy wet rag. London Telegraph, uh, I would call him even more a horrible, sickening, criminal parasite. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. And yes, I think given that what people like Van Rompuy are doing is robbing us of our democracy and robbing us of our ability to determine our own futures. I think I was quite moderate, really. I think you were. I mean, this guy wants to take $45 trillion from us and give it to himself. He's unelected. The whole climate thing has been proven to be a fraud. I mean, he's, he's heading up a criminal enterprise. It, it, it is extraordinary. And, 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 of course, you know, he's not been put there by any democratic means. He can't be removed by any democratic means. And he was talking openly, Von Rumpy, this week in Brussels, about the move towards world government. Nothing hidden anymore. They're not even pretending anymore. This is what some of these people are pushing for. Yes, Paul Watson in Prison Planet two days ago wrote another article with multiple quotes of him saying global governance, global government. I mean, and it's undemocratic. The Financial Times of London admits it's undemocratic. Uh, England's already under it, even though you haven't voted to be part of it. I mean, when does this end? Well, you know, some things in life have to get worse before they can get better. Um, I think the fact that they're being totally open now about their ambitions uh, shows that they think it's in the bag, shows they think they've done the deal, they're the winners, it's all over. And, of course, when people get as arrogant as that, uh, then, you know, the old saying that pride comes before a fall, it will come. But, you know, it's difficult to see in the depths of a time like this, exactly what the catalyst will be. But I just know from my travels, um, from talking to you guys across your side of the pond, and I just know there is a growing awareness, a growing feeling amongst tens of millions of people. They're beginning to wake up to what's being done to them, and it can't go on. Well said. Uh, let's talk about uh, the punishment you're going to undergo. What can oh, they well, do to you? Well, yes, I have got to report to the headmaster's study at midday on Tuesday. It's also reminiscent of being sort of caught smoking at school, isn't it? <laughs> you know, sends off to take your six of the best wax or whatever it may be. I'm going to his office at midday um, at his request, obviously. Um, I think that over the last couple of days, this has escalated into a diplomatic crisis because the prime minister of, of Belgium, the non-country as I called it, the Prime Minister of Belgium is demanding an apology and demanding that this doesn't ever happen again. So I think they're going to ask me to apologize. They don't want you to, to, to continue to point out the obvious that uh, especially Belgium and other nations are fully controlled now by the unelected EU. You have the unelected Von Rumpy telling you an elected member of the parliament to shut up. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, that analysis is entirely right. I am guessing that I'll go and see them next week. I'll be told to apologize. I'm going to point blank refuse. I have nothing to apologize for. I mean, telling the truth should not be something for which I have to apologize or confess. I mean, crikey, we're back to the days of Stalin and show trials, aren't we? And I'm guessing they're going to suspend me from the parliament or something like that. Well, let them do it. I don't care. That'll only draw more attention to this exactly. viperous, viperous little demonic creature. I mean, Von Rumpy, just his whole demeanor, not just his actions, is like Pachari. I mean, they, they, they look like uh, something out of Oliver Twist or something. Classic, classic villain. Stay there. Nigel Farage, a UK member of the U European Union Parliament. He'll be right back in three short minutes. 
The Bilderberg Group documents from their founding meeting in 1954, covered by the BBC a few years ago, reported they wanted to set up the European Union. They said Hitler had failed to take over militarily, that the European Union would be established and then economically take over the planet. Now they admit the European Union, unelected, the separate group of bureaucrats that control the nations, are now telling the elected members, like Nigel Farage from the UK, part of the European Union Parliament, that he can't criticize Herman von Rumpy. And he joins us now. He's being called in next Tuesday uh, to be uh, chastised. Uh, recap that, uh, Mr. Farage. And you're saying you're not going to apologize to von Rumpy or to anyone else, and you expect to be suspended. Uh, and uh, uh, how does that work? How long will you be out of the Parliament? Difficult to tell. Um, the Parliament hasn't really, the European Parliament hasn't ever really had to deal with anyone like me. Um, you've had the odd person that's made a protest because they wanted to get a particular story aired at a moment in time. But what they've never had in the European Parliament, they've not had a leader of a group in the Parliament um, who is utterly, implacably opposed in principle to robbing nation states of their democracy. So, <clears throat> in the past, miscreants have been fined two or three days' pay, um, and the odd person has been suspended for two or three days. But they've never really had anybody who persistently has done this. And as I say, I was called in back in December and told that my behaviour was unacceptable. Um, I called uh, Rumpy and, and the Foreign Minister, Baroness Ashton, I called them political pygmies, which I thought was, again, a very gentle uh, description, really. But I was told that, oh, no, 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 you know, you must never talk like that again. So I just don't know what they're going to do. But, but I would suspect that they'll suspend me for a week or something like that. Expanding on this, uh, for those that don't know, listening in the U.S. and around the world, when you talk about the bureaucrats being unelected, absorbing England, even though your nation's never been able to vote on this, uh, Lord Moncton and many others yourself have talked about as much as 80% of your laws uh, are not even British laws. They're just uh, bureaucracy handed down. Obama's now saying he doesn't care if the U.S. Senate won't ratify uh, and won't go along uh, with the failed treaty uh, and won't pass this bill. He's just going to order the bureaucracy to do it. So this is rule by unelected bureaucracies. But break down the EU model for those that don't yeah. understand. Yeah, the way the EU works is there is a thing called the European Commission. And there are 27 people. Each is appointed, not elected, but appointed by their own member state and by their own country. And each of them has a job title and a brief. So you have, you know, someone in charge of health and, and someone in charge of EU expansion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They have beneath them 30,000 bureaucrats. And the European Commission has the sole right within the European Union to propose legislation and the sole right to repeal, amend or change legislation. So what happens is the Commission comes up with a law. It gives it to the Parliament. The Parliament messes around with it. The Parliament can delay it a little bit. Um, and then in the end, it gets rubber stamped uh, further down the line by more civil servants. So everything, the, the, the way in which our laws are actually drawn up in the European Commission the whole process is done entirely in secret. The relationship, of course, because with those commissioners and big business is distinctly unhealthy. And it, it, it is a remarkable thing to think that it is the bureaucrats that make law and the parliamentarians that just fiddle around with the implication. And that, in essence, is the model of this system. We cannot vote for commissioners. We cannot remove commissioners. It is the absolute destruction of democracy and the victory of bureaucracy. So uh, here's a cheap analogy. Tell me if you agree. They're hanging England and the rest of the former sovereign nations at a, uh, at a hangman's uh, gallows, but you get to decide the color of the rope that is put around your neck. You get to uh, uh, d decide what color a bullet is painted that's put in a, a handgun and fired into your head. Yeah, that's quite a good way of putting it, really. <laughs> it's, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the nation states are disappearing. And of course, already it's not working. I mean, the last time I came on your show, I talked to you about Greece, if you remember, and how Greece was signed up to the single currency and things weren't working. Well, now this week, we've had a general strike in Greece, 
We've had the police using tear gas, rubber bullets, all this kind of thing. Um, and a war of words beginning to break out between Greek politicians and German politicians. So even as they've kind of put the finishing touches with this recent treaty they got through, as they've got their new president in, in Van Rompuy, as they've got their foreign minister in Ashton, even if, it, as it appears that they've succeeded, actually the cracks and contradictions within the system are showing that actually this empire isn't going to last very long.